This is a PixHawk flight controller. It has a USB port on the side. All you need to do is plug it in and now it's connected to your PC. The other thing you'll want to do is plug in your radio receiver. There's a port at the top for that. Make sure you plug it in the right way. There we go. This is the radio transmitter that I'm using that goes with that receiver. You can get these from any hobby store. Next, you'll want to download Q Ground Control because it knows how to set up the PixHawk. This is what it looks like. And as soon as you plug in the PixHawk, you get the USB sound. And Q Ground Control should find it automatically here in a second. There we go, it's downloading all the parameters, so wait for that to finish. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure that the drone is running the right version of the PX4 firmware. We're recommending 1.4.4 right now, so I'll download that. Thanks Lorenz. And we can unzip that. And we want FMUV2, since that's the hardware that I'm using. So let's grab that path. Oh, little trick, if you hold down the Shift key, you get Copy as Path. Isn't that a lovely Windows feature that's really well hidden? OK, back to QGround Control. Now, in order for QGround Control to get into firmware update mode, we have to unplug, plug it back in. And you'll see these advanced settings over here on the right-hand side. If you're quick enough, you can select Custom Firmware File. Paths, and there we go. Now it's flashing the PixHawk with the correct version of the firmware. We are working on fixing a bug in the hill mode on the latest version of the firmware, so hopefully that'll be fixed soon. And what we need to do is calibrate the radio. We've already done that, and we need to configure the airframe. These are the different airframes you can pick from, but we need the simulation mode, and specifically Hill Quadrocopter X. You click Apply and Restart. That reboots the flight controller and puts it in simulation mode. Next up, we'll install the Unreal Game Engine. There's the website. And click on Get Unreal. This actually installs a thing called the Launcher. I'll pick the Windows build here. And click Run. You'll want to install this on a fast hard drive. If you have a solid state SSD drive, that would be preferable. So let's go ahead and do that. This installer is pretty quick. It's not actually installing the game engine yet. This is just the launcher. It'll ask you to create an account. I've already done that. And you'll see this launcher. You'll see a big orange button here that says install. We're currently using 4.14. I've already done that, so it's asking me to repair. So I'll go ahead and do that. This one can take a while, so you'll go off, grab a cup of coffee, and it installs the game engine. You can see here it's downloading 3 gigs. It shouldn't take too long. That took about 10 minutes. OK, next step you need some content. Uh, we're actually testing with the modular neighborhood pack because they give you a really nice uh, neighborhood to fly through. So get something like that. There's other content out there that's free. You can try that. So next we need the AirSim plugin. So for that, we go to GitHub. We get the clone address. And then we want to run a Visual Studio developer command prompt so it can find the C++ compiler. Clone the repo. Kaboom. Don't you love how fast GitHub is? Done. In here, we've... Uh, created a little build script that just simply runs MS build. It actually builds both the debug and retail bits. Then it creates a plugin folder with all of those binaries ready to drop into Unreal. So I'll just use that. Great. That only took a couple of minutes. So now what we want to do is grab the Unreal plugin folder that's got all the binaries in it and drop it into our neighborhood, modular neighborhood test. All right, with that plugin in place, we also need to edit this file and make sure it has the plugin block for 
SM. So now we can right click and generate the Visual Studio project files. Let's launch the Visual Studio solution. We should see a game engine project and the game itself with all the content plus the plugin that we added. And I'll use the debug game editor and the Win64 build because we're currently only building 64-bit. And I can just press F5. This may take varying amounts of time depending on how fast your hard drive is. That's why I was recommending an SSD. It'll be a lot quicker that way. Now before we run this, we have to select the Sim game mode under World Settings. So the default game mode, change that to Sim game mode, which comes from the plugin. What that will do is automatically create a drone for us to fly. And if I go ahead and hit play, we see that that drone has been inserted automatically. You can also insert the drone manually, but we just make it easy. Now what's happening here is this is actually connected to the PX4 hardware already. Uh, because it's the default. I'll show you how it did that. If we go back over to Visual Studio, you'll now find a file in your Documents folder under SM called Settings. And this is the default. You'll actually have um, localhost here. But uh, notice that Use Serial is true. It's given the correct board rate by default. It's actually finding a PX4 device automatically. That's what the asterisk means. And so that's why it is already working. If I pick up the transmitter, the remote control, and uh, arm the drone with the normal technique that we use to arm drones, and add throttle. There we go. I'm now flying in simulation mode using the remote controller, where the actual flight is being done by the PixHook hardware. So that's called hardware in the loop simulation, which is really good because uh, whatever algorithms we develop here now has a better chance of actually working on a real drone using the PixHook hardware because we're already testing with that hardware. I can also press F11 to get a nice full screen mode. And what you see in the bottom are some views that we're generating automatically from this world, including a depth map on the left, some automatic classification of objects there in the middle, segmentation view, and an FPV view. I can get rid of those things with by pressing zero, and I can go into first person mode, and that's it. My productivity is now going to go out the window because I am having way too much fun flying this drone. I actually am finding it hard to put down the controller right now. And I might have to go and fly for a little while. Ooh, wow, this is fun. All right, I better stop, get back to work. What else can we do with this thing? All right, if you look at the SM solution, you'll see a thing in here called drone shell. This is just a simple command line shell that wraps the drone base class uh, API that we've provided in the AirLib library with a simple command line. So if I launch the game and hit play, that will actually start a server as well. So this simulator is now listening for commands coming in from the drone shell. So if now I launch the drone shell, it's now connected to that server and I can arm the drone. Yay! Take off. Boom! Awesome. That'll reach a certain height. Whatever's safe for takeoff. What else can we do? Question mark. Lots of commands to play with here. Let me tell it to move to position. Just type help if you want to find out what these things can do. So I'll say move to position dash x. Let's go 100 meters down the road here. Uh, we'll stay at the Y coordinate and the X coordinate and... Oh, first I need to request control because this is an off-board control command. And off we go. Just so happens that the map is lined up with X, Y, Z axis. Otherwise would have just flown into a house. Very good. It's flying at a default speed here, which we can also change using the velocity command. So let's go. Uh, each command that you do will cancel the pre next one. Velocity 2 meters a second. Or 5 meters per second. Woohoo! Yeah, there we go. Now we're cooking. 
All right, see how each command just cancels the next previous one and, and sort of takes over. Once it's reached its destination, it automatically stops and hovers, which seems to be the safest thing to do. Great, now you guys can program all kinds of AI brains to fly this thing intelligently by consuming those video streams, figuring out where it is, and make the drone fly really well.